I'm Sandy Powell and welcome to the Roundtable. Today I am speaking from a platform that is near and dear to my heart. Um, sometimes something will happen to you or happen within your family that will make your awareness, you know, blossom. And uh, the topic uh, today is PTSD. Uh, it is something that has uh, happened within our community, also within our country. Uh, we have a lot of veterans who are suffering in this area. It's an, um, it's an area that a lot of people don't recognize it because there's no missing limb, there's no missing body parts. Uh, it's all internal. And uh, a lot of times they are missed and overlooked because you can't just see it just looking at them. You have to experience it with them. And today I have, uh, of course, my special guest, my son, J.R. Anderson, with me today uh, to talk on the topic um, PTSD. How Thank you, you for being here, son. Glad to be here. Yeah. And uh, just for the record, uh, I know that uh, we did this taping in the, in the day hour, in the morning hour, and, uh, and so morning hours are not always your best time of the day. Right. And so this is a push for you right now. This is definitely a push this morning. <laughs> I definitely pushed this morning. Yeah. But I'm glad you could come out because it's a topic that um, we have to discuss. Awareness needs to be made uh, so that veterans, uh, and I'm speaking on veterans, but we both know that PTSD can happen in any walk of life. Right. Don't have to be in war in order to, uh, uh, you know, experience PTSD. Right. But today, our show topic is from that area, from, from a veteran's perspective. And you were a veteran. Where, where did you serve? I served in the Army. I did about four years uh, from 06 to 07 uh, in, in uh, Iraq. I did 15 months in war. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was really the, the turning point in my life for PTSD. Right. Um, I didn't really know what it was. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know what was going on. I just, uh, I could feel that I was different. Uh, my actions, my mind, my process, uh, everything I did was just totally different. So right. um, it was definitely some adjustment that I could see. Um, but it's almost like watching yourself drown. Um, from afar, like on the outside, right. watching, like you're aware that something's different, uh, and it's almost as if you're only a spectator to it. You're not able to actually do anything about it. Right. Yeah, I was unable to, um, before I really start um, seeking treatment or seeking help mm -hmm. and uh, asking people, you know, what's wrong, mm -hmm. um, initially it was just watching myself drown. Um, I could see myself acting out. I could see myself angry, um, irritable, uh, isolated. Right. But at the same time, I didn't do nothing about it. I right. could, I just, you know, kind of just drowned in my own misery in a sense. And, and I have to say that when you uh, first returned back from um, overseas, <clears throat> you first got back from overseas, I, knowing my son, very well. Right. I could see immediately that there was something missing. You know, a lot of people might have looked at you on the outside and said, oh, JR is home and JR is back. But like a, like a person who may have lost a limb, lost an arm or a leg, I knew you were missing something. I knew something in you was not there. Right. And I could see it in your eyes. And because, uh, you know, you're the funny man, you know, you, you're the, the jokester. And, uh, and, and that I, was one of the things I saw changed. I was still I was still the funny man. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was the covering. I was still funny. I was still able to be who I was. Mm -hmm. um, I think what you recognized in me was the the switches, you know, just kind of just going from one emotion to the next. Right. Or. Uh, the inability to 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 feel, you know, I I was always a kid that had a uh, the big heart, so when you see me not, you know, be heartwarming or cut off and numb to something that 
a heart have should been have. Sensitive about right. right. You 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 know that stuff that you picked up on me because you knew how I was. Exactly. Um, and most people didn't know me in that capacity. They just know Jr. as the jokester. So right. I was still able to 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 mask that in a sense because I still made jokes. I still cracked. I still was able to you know have right. the shell of myself. I think the PTSD strips the inside of a person. Right. Um, I always said to myself that Jr. died out there. You know, I did, he didn't return. Right. And that happens to a lot of soldiers, you know. Tell me, tell, go a little bit into that. You said Jr. died out there. Tell me what you think you left out on that battlefield. What did you leave there? Um, well, the mindset of a soldier, uh, and, I, and then my, my mindset that I tell anybody who joins uh, the military force is that you cannot be, soldiers are not, um, they're not born. Right. Soldiers are made. Right. So you don't wake up one day and you just have all these uh, abilities to do. Right. You know, what happens is that you're put in situations to where now you have to um, push and, and be primed and, and, and do things that you normally wouldn't do as a human being right. to survive. Right. And, and when you do things like that, it kind of takes the humanity out of you. It takes the, the, the humanness, the, 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 the mankind, the kindness out of you. Because that now... ability to feel someone else's pain or hurt. Right, because it's all about survival. And when, right. when it's time to survive and preservation is key, you know, you know uh, love goes out the window. And so is that the break that you feel when you, as a soldier, if I have a heart, I won't pull the trigger. If I have a heart, I won't be able to... You won't do a lot of you things. You won't do a lot of things. You'll end up injured or if not or hurt, dead or, or somebody else someone else is going to be hurt. Right. If you don't make the right choice, right. setting aside the feelings of another human being in front of you, that becomes your enemy. Right. Because sometimes as a soldier in, in the war, it's not always about being on the front lines and, and experiencing, uh, you know, combat. Right. You know, uh, sometimes it's, you know, just normal day routines, you know. Uh, you know, when I came to visit you uh, for uh, Christmas, right. I missed you a day behind because my plane um, was falling out the sky. You know, it didn't, you know, it had an issue. And... That kind of shook everybody. You know, you go on, you're not like the Delta Airline or, you know, <laughs> Southwest. You know, like, yeah. I'm in a C-130, and, you know, the wing is not working. And we, now we're tailing, and we're, we're, we're pretty much falling to the ground. Wow. So we had to do an emergency landing. And just being in that mist, watching the plane go down, wow. you know, that's enough right there to take – anybody over the edge and it, did it did it really because i know with ptsd i know that it that 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 it's a it's a, a play on the mind like something happened in the mind that that this so much stress and that something snapped right is that and so is the fear of death on a constant basis that stress point or that stressful thing that can cause the mind to break because I know when you said when you were on the plane uh, now here you are you've been out in battle you've been out in war and every day is a I could die today moment all right, day right with mortars you know what do you call them e Sm small arm, small arm fires small arm fires and uh, IEDs IEDs right that's a constant on your mind right. that at any moment, something like this could happen until death is right there. Right. And so it's, that's like a pressure on the mind. And then you get on the plane, and you're about to go to some R&R, &R, and here you are, death is right here. Right. It, was that a point where just something maybe just snapped and broke? Well, for me, it wasn't death. Uh, you know, that's something we signed up for. So that wasn't death. It more so for me, it wasn't, I wasn't going to be able to see my family no more. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a lot of soldiers. Or, you know, whatever, whatever reason that you're out there. Mm -hmm. um, if you're out there for your, for your wife or you're out there for your kids, mm -hmm. you're out there for, you know, those are the things that you wake up every day 
and you say, hey, this is why I'm doing this. Right. So when you're faced with those uh, adversities, um, those are the things that you think about. Right. You're not really thinking about yourself. Right. You you want to live because you want to get back to the reason why you're down there. Right. And that's what the things that I thought about. I thought about Bonnie. I thought about you, Free. You, um, you know, if that's my sister, Free. What up? <laughs> um, but that that's that's the stuff that 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 triggered me. Is that I wasn't gonna see y'all no more. Right. That oh, I couldn't come home to y'all. And I think that. Um, once you got here, it was as if you still had not made it here. Like when you got off the plane and we saw you, um, although you were, it looked like you were trying to be, you know, normal, but you just wasn't yourself. Right. You were just like um, uh, a zombie almost. Can I say that? Yeah, it's true. Um, I... When I first came home, um, I remember I sat in the shower for like five hours. I mean, literally, just let the water run. I felt like I was trying to wash off like everything that I had did, everything I had been a part of, everything I experienced. Right. I, I was trying to wash it off, and I, f I couldn't get it off. You know, that night I was drinking. And, you know, I was trying to get my mind off things. You like, we made it home, right. but when I got home, all I could think about is, you know, out there. And that bothered me. Like, now I'm home, but now all I could think about is war. All I could think about is soldiers that are out there now or what's going on out there now. Right. And that bothered me. So did you feel like you should be out there with them and that this kind of, you know, uh, being at home, you should be out there with your soldiers. Is that what you was feeling, maybe, or just? No, I don't think I was that bravery like that. <laughs> I think for me, it was I wanted everybody to come home. Right. You know, uh, for me, I I didn't think the war was 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 needed. I think it was useless, and um, we wasn't fighting for freedom no more. I think we were fighting for other things, and 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 that's what really bothered me. Is yeah. that people were losing their life for senseless things. Right. And uh, I was able to come home, but they weren't. Right. And I wanted them to be able to come home. So right. that was where, where my heart lied. Right. Um, I didn't necessarily want to go out there and, you know, be who who again. No, <laughs> no. I was glad to be home. I was glad to be the one that made it. But my heart went to the ones right. who were still out still there. Still out there. And then to the newcomers that had to go. Yeah. You know, because I knew what, what the war we were fighting, it was it was a war of nothing. Right. It was no it was senseless. We were free. America's free. There was nothing we were fighting for. Right. So that's that was my biggest issue. Right. With us being out there. You talked about the uh the shower and things like that and uh I I kind of went and you know, I got some information cuz ever since uh this has been your struggle PTSD. Right. Um it's become my my research. You know, I, I like to be knowledgeable about it. I want to know as much as I can about it um, because I want to be able to educate myself to be able to deal with people who are dealing with this issue. You know, a lot of times we we take on uh, a project because it's close to us. Right. You know, some people pick up and run with cancer care because someone in their family or themselves have been stricken with cancer. And so... This PTSD, I am, you know, I keep a watchful eye out on people who I know struggle with PTSD. And, then, and then some of the things that, uh, that, that are triggers, so to speak. Right. Um, some of the feelings that you may have, uh, feeling upset by things that remind you of what happened. It is it's something that people with PTSD struggle with. Also, having nightmares, vivid memories or flashbacks of the event that makes you feel like it's happening all over again. Right. And those two kind of things kind of go together because with PTSD, the nightmares, you, you talk about the nightmares and the uh, vivid memories that kind of flash back to you and, and can trigger these 
emotion, these down spirals. Can you talk about that a little bit on the nightmares and and all of that? Um, well, let's just start from the beginning because okay. a lot of it, some of it now I'm able to deal with mm -hmm. or cope with. Cool. I think uh, in, in my counseling sessions I've learned that, you know, this is not a healing process. You know, this is a coping process. You know, you, you don't you don't go nowhere and they just zap you with something and then you just, you know, 100%. Right. You know, what what we've learned is to cope with what we've experienced and to get the best thing out of life that we can get. So right. uh, when I first used to have triggers, um, everything used to get me. Um, loud sounds, uh, sudden noises, right. uh, loud booms, uh, women women crying, kids crying, um, alarms, um, sirens. Fourth of July. Fourth of July is a is a is a, a horrible is, time. Is for a people. veteran's nightmare. Right. And we we don't even understand. I, I know that we're celebrating. Uh, independence uh, and all of that, but I think that the 4th of July is not sensitive to those that are suffering with PTSD for that reason, right. because it's just so vivid for them in their mind when all of this, these explosions are happening. Right. Yeah. That and Memorial Day, I think a lot of people get that misconstrued because mm -hmm. Memorial Day, you know, we're remembering the people that got lost. Right. It's almost like it's a happy birthday, how people say happy Memorial Day. But, you know, it's that's not. for the, the, yeah, it's not that, you know, that's for the people who, who didn't make it back. You know, most, most of the soldiers died in war. You know, you have some that died, you know, just mm -hmm. from life here or, right. you know, some crazy thing here. But the memorial purpose was for people who gave their life fighting for this country. Right. And sometimes, you know, just not knowing or ignorance to it. That's what it um, is. You know, people just run out, happy Memorial Day, you right. know, stuff to like that. Most Americans who have not experienced right. this, uh, uh, you know, war or, or have a veteran in their right. family or something, this is just a day off right. and a time to barbecue and have a good time. Right. But to those soldiers who have been out there or family members who have li lost, lost uh, friends, service members, brothers, brothers sisters, yeah, it is a fathers, time of mothers. mourning right. and it is a day of, of grief. And sadness, and it's not, it's not no celebration party thing. It's not. Yeah, and especially when it's fresh, you know, with you and a lot of your soldiers. Um, and not only that, but you have had the loss of soldiers not only on the battlefield, but have made it back home from the war right. to only lose the battle to PTSD. Right. You want to talk about that a little bit? Right. Um, I came from uh, a, um, 209. ASAP, uh, ASB, uh, that was a uh, aviation unit, mm -hmm. and basically, uh, you know, we were tied to the infantry, right? And uh, we, you know, we did what they did, you know, even though we were aviation, uh, you know, as the soldiers do, you know, right. we do what soldiers do. Right. So, um, a lot of us, we were good at what we did. You know, we had guys that did, uh, you know, they pretty much ran security for the bases. We had some guys that actually worked, you know, intertwined with uh, the infantry itself. Right. And then we had people as myself who had to do missions by themselves uh, to pick up supplies, do things like mm -hmm. that, you know, go on to different camps. Right. And, uh, you know, when we all came back, uh, you know, a lot of us made it back. We were good at what we did. Right. But a lot of, um, out of my unit, um, I think last year, Sergeant Wells was maybe the sixth guy that committed suicide. Wow. Um, they found him in his home uh, in Bragg, uh, 36 years old, four kids, uh, wife. Um, just took his life. Took his life. Um, I mean, it just reminded me of what the battle was because mm -hmm. I really didn't know what I was facing. Um, I know what I was feeling inside. I know, you know, what I was going through um, is real. But uh, when somebody checks out like that, you know, it it hit me. It hit home because yeah. I was facing the same thing they were facing, and I'm still facing that. Right. And uh, it just seems like every few years, the number just keeps growing. Cause we started off 
with just two guys. Um, and one guy, he did it maybe the year after we came home. Right. Um, specialist Herring. Mm -hmm. Just had a, a newborn girl, just got married. Right. You know, ch took his life. Took his life. And, and so now y'all are up to six, six from your from unit. From our unit. And just, and just imagine adding it up. Right. You know, you know, there's plenty of units, plenty of companies. Right. But that's just six from our unit. Right. And, um, you know, the number is growing. And this is why I think it's important that we have these type of shows and these type of conversations because when you don't know what a person is struggling with or going through, you'll put expectations on them that will overwhelm them or could overwhelm them and bring them to a breaking point. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes our society, although we are aware that we were in war for over, what, 20 years? Yeah. Over 20 years? Because I think it, Desert, Desert Shield started back in 1990. Yeah, we had we had a little pause, and then uh, and then 2001 we had the, you know 9/11, right, and then that kicked off. Right, so it was just it's it's just been almost a continual right. of war, uh, and even though you said it was a little pause, you know a little pause didn't really happen because there were still soldiers right. that were still out there. Right, um, it wasn't just as big as it is, and so sometimes that's what makes us think that we good and we at peace. In actuality, there's still soldiers back out there fighting. Right, but our society has not prepared itself for these soldiers mm -hmm. to come back and integrate back into society, and and be able to help them to cope. Because, like you said. PTSD is not something that you just, oh, okay, by the way, I'm, I'm good, I'm healed. No, it's something that you learn to, to live with, you right. cope with it. Right. You learn to, to do things or uh, um, to, to give yourself the opportunity to come up with a better decision or a better plan, right. so to speak. And I, I think that that's where we have failed in our society because when we look at you, look, I mean, you're handsome, yeah, they can't help that, but <laughs> and, yeah, hey, hey. yeah, you got, you got, you got mm. it from the jeans. Okay, uh, but and, and but you, if you look, you got your arms, your legs, you know, you just look like a normal guy. Until I pick up the phone and I call, hey son, and or I try to call you, and uh, all day long you won't answer my call. Right. You know what I mean? Or, or I get up in the morning, or and or. And we, we try to make a phone call or we try to come by or see you and you don't want to come out. You just want to sit in the house Isolated. with all the blinds closed in, in the dark. Yeah, let me speak on that. Yeah. I, I, um, when I first got back, um, well, when, we was, when I was out there, mm -hmm. you know, we, we lived a certain way. We did a certain thing. And then when you got into a routine and, you know, you didn't realize that your routine came back home right. with you. Right. Uh, you know, my wife, she gets on me because, you know, my house is like always dark in in the daytime. It's dark. I'm talking about you walk in my house. I know. You think that I'm dealing. <laughs> I just come in and start turning. Yeah. You oh, think I'm turn dealing, on you lights. Think, you think I'm dealing drugs because it's just that low. Or you don't <laughs> want Georgia power, right. you know. <laughs> but it's it's really a reflection of how I lived in Iraq because mm -hmm. it was so hot in Iraq. We actually had to put tape, black tape on our windows. We would put black tape on our window, which would basically darken our whole room mm -hmm. to keep the heat out. Mm -hmm. And also because when we had to do certain shifts, you know, trying the, to sleep, the, trying to sleep. Right. And I didn't realize that, you know, I kept that same mindset coming home. Wow. Um, I got flip flops that I, I wear all the time now. I mean, before I went to the military. <laughs> You rarely see me with flip flops. Right. I mean, I, I had some, but most times I wore shoes. Right. You know. Right. But now, I I'm go. I'm glad you didn't wear your flip flops. I'm sorry. Because yeah. normally. I, but I did come with I, <laughs> I mean, I had a, I had a change. Like that. <laughs> but everywhere I go, you catch me with some socks and some flip flops, though. Right. And it's just literally a mindset that. Like a routine that you get into so to speak, and this becomes a part of your ritual on how to keep it routine, going. Routine, routine, and uh, I got towels. You know, you're supposed to hang them up over a towel rack. You know, we had doors. So if you go into my, my room right now, I got towels 
hung over my doors. Over the top of the door? On the top of the door. As opposed to on the rack. Because we didn't have racks. And not rack. We didn't have that. So, you know, doing that every day, you know, 365 and a couple more months every day, you know, hanging towels up, washing towels every day. Bonnie thinks I'm, you know, she's telling me, why are you washing towels every day? <laughs> <laughs> so you won't wash the clothes. I'll wash the towels. But so. you'll wash the towels. Because we need the new towels every day. <laughs> so there's a lot of the routine and stuff I do, right. the way I maneuver, is because it's just been in me since right. that thing. And sometimes it's not necessarily a trigger. It's just now that's how. Is that sort of kind of like programmed? You become programmed and this is this is how you're able to keep it moving in just having a routine that if any and it and if anything gets thrown into that routine it just shatters it your will, day it will drive you nuts right and for soldiers when the routine is you know shifted shifted a little bit it, it it throws us off because we're not we're not used to that you know we're used to a b c d and um you know in this life you know, when we come back to normal living, mm -hmm. that is not life. And, you know, life is A, D, F, Z, back to A again, right. you know. And that's why a lot of these soldiers are checking out because they're not used to that. They're not used to the, the they dysfunction. Need that, they need that A, B, they need C, the structure. D, E. And don't jump to J right. because that will throw them off right. and they don't really know what to do. Right. And, and will that cause and also a, a little bit of that? Uh, reverting back and just isolate again because I, as opposed to not knowing how to move to that thing that's just been thrown at you, it, you just it, pull back? You can get two sides of the coin. You can either get a person who may isolate or you might get a person who may snap. Oh. You uh. know, and you get, you know, when I go to VA, when I take those trips down to VA, I see both. You know, when when they don't, when people are not able to get what they need, mm -hmm. you know, I see some who isolate, you know, who s they just kind of go home and they're frustrated. Or you got those at VA, you know, they about, they about ready to John Q the situation. Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah, and yeah. I think I've seen you in both of those. World Changes Tabernacle, led by Prophet Prathan Powell, is a word-based church committed to seeing you win. We're called to create a loving and caring community for all people and work together for justice and peace in our world. Recognizing that our spiritual journeys are all different, we strive to be respectful and inclusive concerning each individual's relationship with God. We believe that Christianity is a lifestyle and we're committed to teaching, learning, and living the Word of God. It's more than a song, more than a shout, more than a dance. Whether you're a committed follower of Christ or just curious about God, you are invited to visit with us. Give us a call or check out our website for more information or to see our sermon times. 